This is the handheld gaming PC that I'm designing that I've dubbed the Zendek. It's based on a widely available Ryzen 7 mini PC and I'm taking as much feedback from my audience as I can to make this thing the best it can possibly be. In the last episode, I asked what features you guys would like to see added and an overwhelming number of you requested a trackpad. So today, I'm gonna try and make that happen. I've been a bit of a technology hoarder for most of my life, so I decided to go digging through my collection of stuff before I buy anything. First I found this trackpad that I think came from an old Toshiba laptop. It's obviously too big for our purposes, but I was hoping I might have been able to copy the circuit and design my own smaller version. Unfortunately the main IC is covered by one of those black blob things, and searching for the part number for the trackpad itself only finds links to where they can be bought as a spare part. Then I remembered that I have an Asus EPC netbook. I remember them having one of the smallest trackpads I've ever seen on a laptop, so I grabbed it out and it turns out it's pretty much the same size as the old Toshiba one, so that's not going to be any good either. So I decided to purchase this DF Robot capacitive touch kit for Arduino, since one of the sensors it ships with looks an awful lot like a trackpad. This kit is based on the MPR121 sensor, which is a popular choice for capacitive touch sensing in the DIY community. With it all hooked up and the sample code running, I was able to read an X and Y position from the pad, which seems like a good start. With the included library, the output is just the number of the pad you are touching. There is no position sensing between the pads. Using the Adafruit library, I was able to get an analog reading from each of the channels of the MPR121. I tried blending the information between the pads so that I could at least measure a position between them, and finally I had something that resembles a mouse. It's quite jumpy as the IC doesn't seem to be able to sense when my finger is on a nearby pad until it is quite close, so I can't get a smooth blend between the pads. One of the members of my Discord, RU Cosmos, found a document detailing how to build a trackpad using the MPR121 with some example code, so I might be able to improve on this with a more standard trackpad PCB and some better code. I also decided to order the Azotech TPS43 that my viewers recommended in the hopes of copying their circuit and scaling down the pad to a size I could use. I had a whole episode planned documenting the design and build process, but I realised once I had it complete and on the desk in front of me, that I need a special program and a flash firmware to the chip. I can buy one of these programmers, it's not a big deal, but it means that if you guys want to replicate this project, I'll either need to sell pre-made trackpads, or you'll be buying yourself a $65 programmer to build a $5 trackpad, which doesn't seem very economical. The PCBs are pretty simple for the trackpad, and the parts are cheap, so if there is enough interest, I'll consider getting the programmer, finishing the design, and selling pre-made units. Now is probably a good time to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this project. The trackpad PCBs may not have been very expensive this time, but they have been a massive help in getting this project started, and we are sure to need their help to get it finished. So make sure you head on over to their site for all your machining, 3D printing, and PCB creation needs. Since I can't test my trackpad design without the programmer, I turned my focus to testing the TPS43 instead. Azotech provides some sample Arduino code which works wonderfully to read the sensor data. For anyone trying to get this sample code running at home on an Arduino Leonardo, you'll need to change the pin which is being used for the ready signal because pin 2 is shared by the I2C connection on this board which will give you some really weird issues until you work out what's going on. I made some basic changes to the example code by including the Arduino mouse library and reading the relative X and Y coordinates straight into the mouse move function. And we now have a functioning trackpad. There is also built-in gesture support, so for now, I've tied the single tap gesture to left click so that I can click on things with the mouse. There's obviously a bit more to it than just these couple of quick changes, but it really won't take much more work to make it a fully functional trackpad. The motion feels fantastic, the gestures work really well, and it seems to do a reasonable job of palm rejection too. It's a shame it's a bit too big for the controller because for only seven Australian dollars, this thing is perfect otherwise. I decided to draw it up in CAD anyway and see if there was something I can do in the model to make this thing fit. And that's when I realized I can hide part of this trackpad below the screen bezel, which might give me just enough room to squeeze this thing in without having to remove the chamfered bottom edge that I really want to keep. I ended up stretching the width of the housing out by about three millimeters, and I've pushed the sticks closer to the outside edge so I can move the buttons up a little to make room for the trackpad. 
I can only do this on the right hand side as there isn't enough room under the edge of the display on the left side, but that's fine with me as I feel one trackpad is enough. Let's fire up the printer and do one more test print to make sure everything feels natural in the new positions. Now that we've got a test print, let's see how it feels. The buttons are in a good spot and the joystick is still comfortable to reach without having to drastically change the position of your hand. The trackpad is a little low, but you can reach it without shifting your grip. And honestly, without making this thing massive, it's not going to get any better than that. The only thing left to work out for the trackpad is the surface, and I have the perfect solution for that. You can buy this material by the meter, but this document binder cost me less than a dollar and it's the perfect material for the job. Nicely textured so it doesn't show fingerprints, but smooth enough that the mouse still feels great to use. This will do nicely. Now that I've worked out a way I can fit the TPS 43, I'm going to continue working on the design, assuming that this is the sensor I will use. If I do finish my own design, it's going to be smaller than this anyway, so it will be easy to adjust the housing to fit. That's it for this one. I'm planning to test the power management in the next video, so make sure you don't miss that. Thanks for watching and see you all next time.